Hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today on Ashley Main Makes, I am making a mid-century tree skirt. This pattern is McCall's 2458, and it is dated 1961, but it definitely looks pretty 50s to me. It includes not only the tree skirt, but a couple of different tablecloth options, a placemat, and a letter holder. They're all pretty hilarious. Um, eventually I might make some of the other ones, but for today I'm just making the tree skirt. Now this pattern has kind of an unusual color scheme. It is blue, green, fuchsia, and red, which traditionally I wouldn't think of as Christmas colors, but actually my mom was telling me that those are the original colors that the Christmas lights came in. To go with my tree, which is more late 60s, early 70s. In the past I've done more of a scarlet red and olive green theme so I thought I would just translate this pattern into colors that I liked for my tree. So I just went to Joann's and got a bunch of stuff. Um, so I picked out these colors which is sort of like a red and gold mix which I thought would be really nice along with this like olive green ribbon as well as some nice big chunky rickrack and some miniature gold rickrack, which I'm excited about. I love rickrack and some sequins. Uh, Joann's didn't have a lot for sequins, so I might see if I can hunt down some more that are a little bit more exciting. For the base of my tree skirt, I've gone with this off-white um, wool rayon blend felt that I just got off the bolt also at Joann's. I'll leave everything link down below that I can. So I'm just undoing the pattern here and someone has already done the work for me a bit. This is the big tree skirt pattern. Um, and someone already made this, so this is really fun. I love when someone has already made the patterns. A, I don't feel bad about using them, but also B, it's just kind of fun to know that someone else made this Someone else maybe had this under their Christmas tree. I just love it. It feels like sharing with someone else in kind of the best way through time. So I've got all the appliques here. It looks like one of them had a bit of a battle with something, I think mostly time. Uh, but the other ones are in great shape. So that's like one of them there. That's the other bulb shape. Seems to be a lot of work actually, it's pretty great. So it looks like this is actually that onion shaped one, um, which is kind of sad. So I'll have to carefully unpick this to see if I can find the rest of it. But I think based on that shape, that's probably enough to go on along with just kind of the outside image of the package there. It's not like it has to be perfect. This is a tree skirt. We're not fitting anything together. This is more of a craft project of anything. So here's a, one of those old sewing guides. Uh, these are kind of hilarious. I would actually recommend picking up a couple of these old patterns just for these guides. They tell you a lot of things. Um, like this one has how to do tailor's tacks, how to do darts. Oh, but this also has some great assembling and finishing details about the pattern here. So I might see if I can take some closer shots of that so you can see that just on finishing and detailing the appliques, which I think is really cool. So it looks like the rest of this is basically factory folded. Um, I think like me, they were attracted to the tree skirt. I think all of the rest of this is intact. So I think we actually have all our pieces already. So I'm gonna go ahead and go iron these and then I'll be back and I'll actually just start cutting out. This is super easy. So. To do this, to iron the pattern, I'm using a low iron with no steam on it, just so that I don't end up damaging the pattern in the process. Um, I honestly think that's what might have happened to that onion piece, actually. So all the vintage pattern people are gonna squeal at me about this, but I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is tape these pieces together that I do have, because um, obviously there was some water damage or something happened here. That'll enable me to be able to trace it, and since I have like a complete half here, I'll have a full piece again. So I went ahead and traced that, and this is the original and then the new. 
and I actually went ahead and traced the rest of them just because this outer line is actually showing where you could make these out of fabric and the inner line is what it would be for felt. Since fabric, you need to turn that quarter inch under to keep it from fraying. So we're gonna go ahead and cut all these out and get going. All right, so welcome back. I'm sorry I didn't record any of the cutting process, but honestly felt is kind of a pain to cut, especially because we're not actually finishing the edges on this. The cutting needs to be really clean and really nice and felt is kind of painful. So I didn't record any of that, but I haven't glued any of this down yet. I was just sort of playing around with the concept of what this looks like. Instead of sequins, I cut out these little kind of felt dots using um, pennies and quarters as my templates just to add some extra pizzazz to this since I haven't been able to find any better sequins. So I think what I'm going to do is sew these down later with a sequin and a bead and then put some loose sequins on just to kind of jazz it up a bit. I think maybe you know next year or as the years go on I can add more to it and I think that's kind of the fun of this. So I'm going to start by gluing everything down. Um, I think I would actually prefer to use some Fabri-Tac instead of this if I could get it, but um, there's been so many shortages on everything, it's been a bit of a struggle. So everything is now dry and I've made three of the bows, um, but I've come to the unfortunate conclusion that I've run out of ribbon 
and nothing else will do. So all the pattern says for felt is just to trim down the edge. Um, on fabric, they have you stitch this down and then turn it so you have just the edge of the rickrack poking out. But this just doesn't look very finished to me. Also, I think just having the gold rickrack here and that being it just doesn't jive. So I think I am going to try and just take my sewing machine and slowly stitch this around the edge just to give it a bit more of a finished look. All right, so I've got the top bobbin loaded with that gold embroidery for thread. And I've got the bottom loaded with cream. So I'm just doing a test here on a little scrap of extra felt that I had. Let's see how good my tension is here. And the reason I've got the bottom loaded with the cream is just to um, keep it from catching. I find this has a tendency to catch and break in my bobbin. Still might even break on the upper. It's not that great. There you go. You can see that gold in there. So I don't think you'll be able to see that when I get that up against the gold rickrack. And there's the back. Yeah, I think that's going to work great. So home stretch here, I'm just going to actually cut this um, hole a little wider. Obviously this was meant for those like aluminum Christmas trees back in the day, which won't work for my real tree. And I think I'm just going to leave it blank and not line it with the rickrack like I did the rest. And I'm already showing too much, so I'm going to do the big reveal. I'm really happy with this project. I think it's really cute and goes very well with my Christmas tree. The only major failing of this project was the glue. The pattern didn't call for glue, but it was certainly helpful in sticking everything in place until I was able to sew it. I think next time I would research or try out a few different types of glue before I did this again. You don't need this pattern to create a tree skirt like this. You could certainly take this idea and roll with it and make a skirt with reindeer or presents or landscapes or really anything to go with your Christmas tree. I did end up using a modified running stitch to stitch the larger ornaments on by hand as well as stitched on some sequins and some seed beads. I wasn't super happy with these sequins. I would really like something larger and so I think it'll be fun to embellish this as I go down the road. So let me know, did you like this project? I had a lot of fun doing it. I think it really helped me get back into the Christmas spirit. I would love to do more projects like this that are a bit more crafty. Hit that button down below, subscribe, and I hope everyone has a really happy holiday. Bye.